What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, First Presbyterian Church of Murfreesboro. Uh, this is your daily meditation for Thursday, April 15th, 2021. Glad you're here. Um, so get this. Um, last night was Wednesday night. Uh, we had our student life groups that meet at people's homes. I meet with high school students in my backyard. We sit around a fire pit and we've been reading through the gospel of Mark in that group. No agenda. We just kind of read um, and we stop where we find interesting things and we talk about it. We ask questions. Some we try to answer. Some we just keep going. It's really great. Okay. So last night the scripture was in, we like I said, Mark chapter three. Okay. Um, and we read the whole chapter, and I was thinking this morning about maybe I'll use something from Mark 3, you know, for the daily meditation. But nothing really jumped out at me. It, you know, it's, an, it's a very, it's a, the end of Mark 3, very interesting, is that moment when Jesus is in the house with some disciples, there's a big crowd everywhere, and some people come to him and say, hey man, your, your mom and your brothers and your family's outside waiting for you, they want you to come out and talk to them. And he, Jesus says, who is my mother and my brother? <laughs> Anyone who does the, he looks around at everybody with him in the house and he goes, these are my mother and my brother. Anybody who does the will of God is my mother and my brother and my sisters. Uh, cool moment. Anyway, so Mark chapter three, I thought, maybe let's look at that. Um, got the kids to school this morning, got back home um, and got my little devotional type book that I use where I, on every page of that book, I have a little scripture written that I map out way weeks and weeks into the future. I don't know what I'm going to read every day. I just, I open up my little notebook and I've, I see that I've written Matthew chapter something, you know, and I, that's the one for the day, right? It has nothing to do with what happened last night. Well, wouldn't you know it, um, today's scripture that I had written down to read was Matthew chapter 12, um, verses nine through something. It's the same thing. It's the same passage. It's the parallel gospel text that we read in Mark last night. So what do you know, right? We're Presbyterians. We don't believe in coincidences. Um, you know, I'm, so I'm going to read these. I'll read both of them. And let's, I'm just trusting that God is drawing our attention to this passage for whatever reason today. Um, and that's, so that's what we're going to do. Let me read you first Mark chapter 3, uh, starting at verse 1. I think it's 1 through 6. Another time he went into the synagogue, Jesus, and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man with the shriveled hand, Stand up in front of everyone. Then Jesus asked them, which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they remained silent. He looked around at them in anger and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts, said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was completely restored. Then the Pharisees went out and began to plot with the supporters of Herod how they might kill Jesus. Okay. Mark chapter 12. Very similar. A little bit. We know, I mean, Matthew chapter 12. We know Mark was written first. Uh, Matthew used Mark's gospel as a source for his gospel. Um, so here, let's see how Matthew tells this story. Matthew 12, starting at verse 9. Going on from that place, he went into their synagogue, and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, they asked him, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? He said to them, If any of you has a sheep, and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will you not take hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable is a man than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, stretch out your hand. So he stretched it out and it was completely restored. 
just as sound as the other. But the Pharisees went out and plotted how they might kill Jesus. Well, just to point out some differences right away, I notice in Mark's gospel, um, Jesus, the man with the shriveled hand is there and Jesus says to him, stand up in front of everybody. And then Jesus asks the crowd, is it lawful to do good or to do evil on the Sabbath, to heal or to kill? In Matthew's version, um, the man with the shriveled hand is there and they want to accuse him, same, same, same. But they asked him, in Matthew's version, it starts with they ask, them asking Jesus, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? In Mark's version, um, they don't say anything. They're silent. Um, in Matthew's version, they ask the question. In Mark's version, Jesus just heals the, heals the man's hand and is angry and distressed at their stubbornness. In Matthew's version, um, Jesus tells uh, a little bit more of a, a story, you know, like, you know, if, if one of you has a sheep and it falls into a pit, you know, once you lift it out, how much more valuable is this man than a sheep? So it is good, you know, so different, a um, little bit different. At the end of each one, we know that they want Jesus dead. They want him dead. That's pretty clear. You know, given that these two scriptures kind of came to us by way of divine providence, you might say, you know, of all the scriptures I'd written down, what are the odds that the one for this morning would be the same one that I read last night with the students? I don't know. Um, so I want to say, I hope that these scriptures through the Spirit, somehow these are speaking to you, that there's something happening that I don't even know about, and that would be great. Um, I, could, I could, like, put on Pastor Bobby hat and just start riffing about these, this, this moment in the Gospels and what's happening here and what I notice and what's, what we know and what we don't know. Um, but I don't, that'd be, I think that that's not what we're here to do, right? What stands out to me is just is the this reminder that um, being in a relationship with God, who wants to be in a relationship with us, God who's given us the Sabbath. The Sabbath is a gift, right? Something that, the Sabbath is something that God wants for us to receive, not something that we have to do. Uh, and this is what Jesus is constantly up against when he's dealing with Pharisees and other folks that being faithful to God, being obedient to God, is about following the rules and following the rules correctly. And that's what it's about. And if you don't do it that way, then we're going to kill you, right? Um, and you're, we're going to get rid of you and your craziness, okay? But Jesus is, is, is teaching something new. Um, this idea that being in a relationship with God, being obedient to God, opening yourself to love, to, the, to divine love, isn't about following the rules so much as it is about receiving grace, right? Um, it's, it's about the, the, we learn later through Paul's language, it's about the fruit that we produce, uh, not about following the rules or avoiding sin or doing everything just so. So that's kind of my, that's kind of what I'm reminded of. Uh, just off the top, that's what's coming to mind for me. I would love to be able to sit with you all and say, what's jumping out to you, you know? And so, so let me know. You guys got my email. Um, you can leave a comment for this YouTube video on what stands out to you. I hope something. Hope this is an encouragement. Uh, we hope you're well. Hang in there. Beautiful weather, cooling off a little bit. We love you. So glad that you're with us. Grace and peace, and we'll see you next time.